Welcome to the sunny South. And in this episode of Thermal Mermaid, we're coming to you from Mobile, Alabama. Now I've landed in South Alabama to visit the Thermal Mermaid, and after discovering that Mobile has the largest flea market on the Gulf Coast, we decided to check it out. Now if you're a soap maker and you're curious about bringing your market goods to the public, I'm going to give you a sneak peek on our day here in Mobile. And don't forget, if you're looking to turn your hobby into a small business, then hit the subscribe button for more videos where we take you behind the scenes at our market experience. And on a last minute whim, we thought it would be fun to set up a soap table to see how a big market in Alabama is different from a big market in New England. And boy, do I have a checklist for you. Now, since the Thermal Mer Mom makes soap at her home as well, she had enough to fill a market table. So we spent a night making a few batches of lotion and piecing the table together to see what the customers in Mobile are like. Now, unfortunately on this trip, I've come down with something of a cold. So I'm gonna let the Thermal Mer Mom take over and explain to you what the fairgrounds flea market situation is in Mobile, Alabama. Hi friends. Last spring, Jennifer sent me some video of the market she attends in Connecticut. And it looked very different from what I recognize down here. Well, yeah, as a matter of fact, I wanted to make a video for viewers from last spring. But the first and the biggest difference is that I do all my setting up in the dark. And as a matter of fact, I do a lot of my sales in the dark. And that didn't capture too well on video. And that's the first luxury that I noticed here in Mobile. It's setting up the market table in the early morning after the sun's come up. That's right, we arrived at 7 a.m. and set up, but the regulars didn't open their stands until 9 a.m. and some came even later. I understand that you have to be at the gate on your grounds much earlier. Yeah, in Connecticut, people come from Pennsylvania, New York, and Maine, all to sell at the Elephant's Trunk in Milford. And the line of vendors is really long, even at 4.30 in the morning. So by 5 a.m., I'm up unpacking tables and tent covers, and buyers even start coming in at 6 a.m. in the pitch black dark. Oh no, not here. Here the crowd rolls in at 9 or 10, but it didn't really pick up until 12 to 2 p.m. Now on this Saturday, it's the first week after Christmas and the crowd was fairly light. Still, we did have at least 2,000 people walk past that table. Now one thing I know about Christmases in New England is you couldn't be outdoors at a market up there right now. It's too cold and today is beautiful outside. It was 70 degrees and perfect for an open air market. Another thing that's different from your market is that ours is set up like a giant fairground. We have a solid structure covering and not everyone is just setting up a single market table like we did today but some of them are permanent booths where you can walk into little stores and shops. Overall, there are about 400 vendor booths and about 80% were filled. How many vendors do you have up there in Connecticut? Yeah, about 500 vendors. Another thing that was very different was how much less back-breaking work your market had. Now here you just check in, you drove to your booth, the lights, the electricity, the shelter, and the tables were already there for you. All you had to do was make things look pretty. And even that we were able to pull off on a short notice. Now in the open fields up at my market in Connecticut, you have to bring tables, you have to bring a canvas covering, banners, and if I want electricity, I have to run it out of my car. And of course my car is locked in until we're allowed to leave at 2 p.m. So there's 30 minutes of full physical work in the dark at the beginning and then 30 minutes of breaking everything down at the end. So all in all, your market is a lot easier. We probably sell different things down here in South Alabama. The Mobile Flea Market has just about everything. You can find artists and livestock and fresh food. Is that the same as at your market? Yeah, yours feels more like a county fair. It seems like there are a lot fewer rules here. You had animals outside, you had a ShamWow mop guy attracting a crowd, and then you had people bringing their garage stuff set up right next to full-blown real stores. It was kind of like a kaleidoscope of sellers. Now, in New England, you have that too, but people are on the hunt for antiques and art. And that's what drives that early morning crowd before everyone gets up. Art dealers are looking for goods for their high-end shops. And there are people who are making some serious money in art, and that also drives that market to be open in March and for people to go out in those sub-freezing temperatures. 
We also have this spillover of New York City knockoff stuff that people try to sell. It's kind of a combination of shipped in Chinese goods and fake name brand stuff. And you see that all over the place on the sidewalks in the, in the north and places like at the Macy's Day Parade in New York City when all the tourists come in. Yeah, you saw a little of that here. There was a supervisor walking around with handouts about contraband and fake goods. They watch for those things, but that doesn't apply to us because we're only making handmade soap. That's our own product. So what do you think about the sales? Were there different items selling down here compared to up there? Oh, good question. Well, we did leave early, but that's because we got there several hours earlier than everybody else when the lady in the office told us to come. So next time, we know that just because they say be there at 7, they really mean be there at 9. But on that small table on just a short notice, you did make over a $100 profit on your first time at the market, even after the weekend fees. So I'd say that was a success. Now, when I started at a new market, it usually takes a few weeks before people start to recognize you and then make friends, and then it just goes up from there. And of course, when the weather is this warm in January, people are naturally in friend mode. So in my estimation, there's no reason in the world that at this market location, it wouldn't bring you a comparable income to a full retail store if you set up every week and began to build your customer base. I noticed that customers who bought liked many more of the same things. The goat's milk and honey oatmeal with the matching lotion sold very well. We almost sold out of that one. And the charcoal soap bars made with coconut wood sold very well. Yeah, those are two that always sell out for me at my table as well. I'll also mention that I have difficulty in some coconut fragrances with the vanilla stabilizer, but the coconut woods does not discolor and it doesn't really act weird. And that's the one that people like when they're smell testing at the table. So that was something similar at both of our markets. So overall, you think this was worth it? Yes, if you're looking to start a business out here, yes, you could definitely make a living and build a business from scratch from this location. Now, this wouldn't happen in one weekend, but this is a good market for exposure and for moving your inventory to keep it rolling through. The crowd is really pleasant and it's much more socializing and less physical work, which I have to do up north. Now, if you're a soap maker who's curious about getting out there and testing your product, to make the shift from hobby soap making to a small business, then starting out at a farmer's market and flea markets are a great way to get out there. Now over the past decade, I've had retail stores, I've had retail chains and market tables, and there's really nothing better for artisan crafts to test a market than to be face-to-face -face with consumers this way. Not all retail stores make better profit than many market tables. State fairs and markets this large can draw 5,000 people on a weekend, and that's a much larger number than some shopping malls. Now over in the members section at Thermal Mermaid, I've been working on a market directory for several months for those of you in the United States to have easy access to farmers markets and flea market information. And what I've discovered is that the United States has over 160,000 open air markets. And so that means there's a sober table for just about everyone out there. And of course, I'm still working on that directory as we speak because the numbers are just huge. And I'm still trying to figure out what this lady was selling, but I tried to wiggle my way in there and peek around, but she shooed me out fast enough. I did hear her say she hits Renaissance fairs all up along the Gulf Coast and in Florida, so I'm not too sure what this stuff was, but it certainly was a curiosity. So this was my very first impression of the Mobile Flea Market, and if you're in the Alabama Shoreline area, then this is definitely a place you'd want to set up. And another tip about big markets like this, don't worry an inch about other soap makers setting up their shops. In fact, when I chat with other soapers, I always invite them to set up near me if I can, because then your shoppers will start to expect you in a section and then they come looking for you. And if your market has more than one table, then it stays in people's memory better and then they look forward to coming back. So I think I've covered everything on my first impression at the Mobile Flea Market. And if you have any questions about this experience or what to expect, then leave it in the comments below and I'll get to answer those too. Next week, back to Connecticut.